On this episode of Miss Dot Geek, we're going to discuss lifesavers. What? No. Who thought of that? That was a bad idea. No, we're going to talk about this radio that I got at Goodwill for two and a half bucks. It's got AM. It's got FM. It's got speakers. It's got a cassette player. It's got a clock in it. What does that have to do with ham radio? Well, it's a radio. Let's find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, get it tuned. Because <laughs> it's a... Yeah. So in this video, we're going to look at this uh, AM, FM uh, cassette tape deck deal uh, that I picked up at Goodwill. Now you'll notice that first off, uh, it's marked $4.99 and I said in the intro, I got it for two and a half dollars. Well, the reason for that is I said something. See this here? If I want to use this as an actual clock radio, it looks like it's missing a cover. And honestly, I thought it was. Missing a battery cover, it actually clips in. So I believe there's a cover that goes here too. I'm not really sure. Anyway, I thought I was missing a cover. I said, hey, it's missing a cover. Can I get a discount? And they knocked the price in half. I was hoping for a buck. So, um, although I, I actually kind of feel bad because uh, it looks like this is just a clip for the actual nine volt battery itself. So, sorry, Goodwill people, if you're watching, I apologize, um, but whatever. So, why did I pick this? Well, I don't actually need a clock radio for anything. Um, I have a clock, uh, I have a clock and a timer and everything on my on my phone, so I don't need that. Um, looks like the record is stuck here, maybe. But the reason I picked this is because well, it's, there's several reasons. The first reason is it's got an analog tuning right here, and so that tells me that there's probably a Vericon in here. So those are handy for projects. Uh, such as QRP antenna tuners and whatnot. Um, the other thing is there is all of the junk in here for a tape player. You know, so you got a motor, you got some belts, some pulleys, and some cool stuff for little projects uh, that I plan to do in the future. I I've always loved taking apart things like that. And if you're like me, you've been taking stuff apart since you were a kid anyway. The other reason I picked this particular one over some of the other ones there, um, Panasonic. So. If you're going to tear into something like this and you're going to try to salvage it for parts, you want quality stuff. Um, you don't want stuff that's built by the lowest lowest bidder in China. Now, this is probably built in China, but there's different levels of, of quality. And in fact, was it built in China? Made in Singapore. Okay, cool. So um, even, it doesn't matter where it's made, honestly, because we, you know, we, we talk about Chinese junk. Junk can come from anywhere. Come on, Yugo. That's enough said, right? Or Fiero. <clears throat> anyway, so we want quality, and if we're gonna, if you want to stock your junk box of quality stuff, you got to buy quality stuff. Uh, this was probably forty or fifty dollars when it was new, maybe thirty, and that's good for us because that means this, these uh, speakers are probably half decent too, and that might factor in later. So what I'm going to do is just tear it down, and uh, I've got my reversible uh, screwdriver here. And I usually just use this here, and uh, this bit's broken, but I get by. My Leatherman, I'm sorry, not Leatherman, my Gerber suspension. Uh, there's a link to this in my blog. I love these things, and uh, it does so much cool stuff. I've got my little Hacko cutters. The CHP 170. There's also a link to my blog on these. And last but not least, this little guy, little jeweler's uh, screwdriver for reaching hard to find things and hard, hard to reach things. So first things first, let's flip it over and take out some screws. So uh, first thing I want to do is I just identify where all the screws are. And there's always some around the perimeter. So I've got one here, 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 here. Mm, let's see, that one is a dead end here and here. So we'll just start by removing those and see where that lands us. And 
end, that was predictable. That is way too short. Thankfully, I've got this nasty old screwdriver that I probably inherited from my like great grandfather or something. I don't know. Um, so that's long enough. And that works. And last one. You know you're done getting them out because you can hear it. You hear that clicking? That's the screw topping out. So let's dump all the screws out here. And look at that. <laughs> it just flies apart. Uh, so, all right. So I wasn't really expecting it to come off that easy. So I'm going to go ahead and first, uh, looks like these speakers are wired to this little harness right here. And this looks like it unplugs. This is why you want the quality stuff, the Sony, the Panasonic, uh, maybe Hitachi, whatever good brands you see. If you see like Kobe, you know, it looks like Sony, but it's actually Kobe. Walmart junk, forget about it. Don't even bother. This isn't Walmart junk. This was probably like, you know, Sears junk. So I'm just going to unplug this. And man, wasn't that nice? I didn't even have to get out my little cutters to do that. So now I can take this and set it aside and... Um, I'm going to show you one of the one of the other reasons that I bought this actually before I set it aside. See these? Uh, well, let's see. Let's take a quick look. Let's take a quick look at the front, shall we? Let's get these uh, screws out of the way. Don't throw them away. Keep that stuff. You might need it. All right. So one of the reasons I saved I I purchased this one is that this looks crazily close, like incredibly, incredibly close to a 16 by two LCD. And like, I am shocked at how close it actually is. Here's a bezel that fits one and that's almost exact. So what's gonna, what that means is that, let's see, I've got this bit right here, which will come out really, really easily. There's these control pieces that are held in by this bracket here, and that comes out. Another reason to buy quality is it stuff's screwed in instead of just being molded. And it's assembled with actual technology, not just plastic um, that doesn't want to come apart. Here we go with these. See them, they just pull right out. Put that aside. Okay. And now we've got free and clear access to that uh, bezel. And I'll bet this pops off real easy, although I, I kind of want to leave it because it looks pretty nice. But I can just test fit this right here. And man, is that close or what? Or even down here. In fact, putting it in the light, if I really wanted to, I could I could probably I could probably break those off. Like uh, for example, these little ridges right here, I could just take those and cut them. This is why flush cutters are awesome, people. I don't know if you can see in the light, and I'm gonna try to make it. I'm trying to make it so you can see, but flush cutters are awesome because they can do things like cut this flush. And now we got room for this. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. I hope, I hope you can see that. But the bezel, the inside of this bezel is smaller than the inside than the outside of this bezel. So you could conceivably just glue that right there, or maybe even use some standoffs and, and bolt it. But um, that's going to look like a basically like a factory finish for your homemade radio. And I spotted that, and I thought, you know, that looks a lot like a 16 by 2 uh, dimension. Only one way to find out. This is it. I'm actually pretty stoked about that. And this is going to end up being a QRP radio eventually. So let's take a look at the rest of the radio. 
that out of the way. Get this out of the way, get that out of the way. So let's take a look at the rest of the radio. Let's tear it down into its parts. And already, there are these nice extensions here on these buttons. We just pull those off. It looks like it's got a microphone um, for recording. Huh. That might come in handy for, I'm not sure if it's an electric mic, but it sure looks like an electric mic. Um, so that might even, might even be usable. So it does not unplug, we're just gonna cut it off. And so there's part number one for our junk box. And get rid of this. We'll unplug this connector, which apparently comes from the power supply below. So we'll get that out of, out of the way so that we can remove the, the board later. It doesn't want to come off. I'm probably not doing it right. Let's try it here. And that came off. Well, that wasn't pretty, but it's off. I mean, we're not going to use this board, so destructive is okay. And let's see here. We've got this little bit. Looks like uh, the AM, PM. Or, let's see here. That would have been the... Message. Oh, was this thing a... I think this might have been... No. It doesn't say. Interesting. Uh, I thought maybe for a second this, this thing doubled as a uh, um, answering message machine. Uh, message... Uh, answering machine. But I did not. So there's an indicator that says message and FM. Or stereo, I think it was. So we're just gonna cut that off. Those little LEDs might be might come in handy. They're on a common board, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's see. Let's start unscrewing things here. So we'll start with just the corners. And every time you see a snow cone here, that means that's where a screw goes. So we'll take we'll take the screws out. There's one screw for the cassette mechanism, and that pops out. Look at this, it just unplugs from the main board. How gorgeous is that, right? Even, like the whole thing unplugs. And so you're gonna have this nice little DC motor, nine volt, and it's uh, associated pulley, which is totally falling apart. I hope that's not alive. Uh, um, so it's a nice little mechanism you got going here. And that's great for little parts when you're trying to build like maybe a little robotics kit or you know a little make, make, maybe making a little robot. There's this little contact here, um, which is probably for uh, it's for something, but like that's totally a little robot sensor, you know, to, to like a whisker uh, for a little little robot that you're making. Anyway, so we're gonna set that aside. So now we're left with the rest of this board. Um, we've got a bunch of little switches here. Those are probably, probably pretty hard to remove, uh, but you, you could. Uh, a bunch of, a lot of capacitors on here, although uh, the value of used electrolytic capacitors is debatable. Um, there's clearly a lot of other parts on here. Uh, this is not completely surface mount, so you know it's a bit older. In fact, I wonder if there's a date on it. Um, yeah, I don't see a date on it. But I'm guessing by the vintage uh, with a cassette player, higher technology, but not you know, good technology, but not um, uh, digital. Um, I'm, not, I'm sorry, but, but not digitally tuned, not PLL tuned. It's got an analog circuit here, over here. So I'm, I'm guessing early 90s, uh, just off the top of my head. If anybody knows, please say so in the comments. I'd love to hear your input. Uh, I'm not the smartest man in the room, and I know it. So... Um, let's see if we can get this board to come out now. Got rid of all the screws, I think. Now there's a, a knob over here, volume knob over here. Volume knob over here is holding things up, so I'm just going to remove that. But we're going to keep this because that's a nice little knob for a lot of potentiometers uh, besides this one. So we'll see what else. Oh, we got a screw hidden back here. Think I took that off, I would not have seen that. So we got a snow cone right there. All right. 
One and quarter turn extra. There we go. All right, and let's see if I see any more snow cones that I didn't get. Eh, it's free. Okay. So the only thing holding it down at this point is the nine volt connector. And uh, that looks like that's maybe glued right there. So I'm just gonna cut it. And I can salvage that separately if I want to. The nine volt connectors are kind of cool to have. Voila, intact nine volt connector for whatever project. I don't actually use 9 volts because of batteries. I mean, they've got no capacity to them, very little uh, amp hour capacity, and they're insanely expensive. They're like the worst of both worlds, except they're compact. You can get 9 volts out of this little tiny thing, which I guess is cool. Uh, me, um, I don't need them, and I don't like them, and I don't use them if I can help it. So the nice thing is, if you want to solder six double A's together to get 9 volts, you could use one of these to attach it to another 9 volt because this essentially turns anything into a nine volt battery. So you get, get a, a pack of six, six uh, 1.5 volt double A's or even D batteries, doesn't matter. And look at that, you got nine volts or a 7809, LM7809 voltage regulator and, and uh, maybe a 12 volt power supply, boom, nine volts. So these are really handy. You can make a battery eliminator really, really easily. So what have we got here? Uh, we got a tuning knob that's enormous and we'll talk about that in a minute but here's the Vericon that I was hoping was there these are handy and useful for QRP tuner projects because uh, variable capacitors are expensive and for really low voltage handling uh, from QRP you know five watts or less this is your guy I'm probably going to use this for a receiver project that's part what I'm probably going to do um, so we've got lots of other usable parts on here, I think. Those capacitors actually look pretty good. You want to look at the top and the bottom of them uh, to see if they're bulged. Uh, in the early 2000s, between like 2001 and 2006 or so, um, and there was an interesting case of industrial espionage had gone wrong where um, the formula for the electrolyte was stolen. And these manufacturers started cranking out electrolytic capacitors like there was no tomorrow, cheaper than the competition, the specs were just right. Problem was they got the wrong formula and they didn't last. And so, I mean, serves them right, right? But um, so you end up with capacitors blowing in all sorts of things, uh, power supplies, uh, computer motherboards, actually recapping computer motherboards was a thing for quite a while. At the beginning of the video, I showed you how this thing has a tuning on the front. So check out this mechanism. It's actually pretty cool. Whoa. Yeah, grease got on my shirt. Oh, well. This tuning mechanism, the, the, the dial indicator mechanism is pretty cool. You got this like snake-like uh, uh, strip here. And it's got teeth on it. And this too has teeth on it. And the axle fits in here. The teeth mesh. And you've got, what am I doing wrong here? There we go. So you've got this basically like a little linear actuator, really, turning, taking a rotary motion, turning it into a linear motion. So. That's the basics of a lot of uh, linear servos too. They take a linear motion and or a rotary motion and turn it into a linear motion. So very basic setup there, but quite effective and uh, easy to read. So I'm um, not going to say it's for any specific purpose. I guess it's, it's got some little grooves here. Might make a little uh, little wheel. Anyway, let's hang on to it for another time. And then of course here's this display. Uh, this lovely. Uh, LED display with an LMB5562 driver. I don't know if that's any good for anything else, but salvaging it from this would be more trouble than it's worth, so I'm not even going to think about it. Uh, as far as other parts on here, so there's a few things here and there. This circuit board is mostly stuff that's not useful to, to me anyway. Um, but 
it's got some potential, but the main thing is this guy here. And this guy, it's just going to get uh, um, desoldered. And you might even have to cut it out a little bit because that's, there's a lot of solder there. And the trick to that is if it is lead-free solder and I can't tell, you just add a bunch of solder to it and until it, uh, it gets real nice and molten. And then you can usually just pull things right off. But uh, anyway, so let's move on to the, the rest of the chassis here. So the other bit is this power supply that I mentioned earlier. And we've got this guy here. And we'll take a look at that. So there's a transformer here. I'll just go ahead and unbolt that from the plastic chassis. Looks like this area is covered and by this piece. I was worried I wasn't going to get it to use my Gerber tool. That was easy. I love this thing. I've had this one several years. Um, I think I bought it in like 2012 or 11. I've had it forever. Anyway, I just love it to death. Uh, last one I had, it did end up breaking at some point. My son was just using it, and he was barely touching it, and it just broke right down in here. But I separated the halves and still used it until uh, I lost them, or he lost them. Don't let your kids borrow tools, people. Okay, uh, all right. So here we've got a very simple power supply, and uh, there's I don't see any, any real markings. Uh, very simple. This is about as simple as it gets for a power supply. You got a multi-tap transformer uh, here. There's two, one primary over here, and it looks like one, two, three secondaries. And let's see, there are how many? I might, I might mess those up pretty good. Looks like uh, seven wires here, so one ground, and then and then. Uh, three different voltages, positive and negative, going to the radio. And I see four diodes for the rectifier. So real basic, uh, but probably works real nice. And if I really feel adventurous and like I want, want to electrocute myself, I might actually fire it up and test the voltages on it. So that's why I did not cut this initially because it just didn't seem like the right thing to do. And then I'm not sure what this is all about here, actually. I do know what this is about. It's the antenna. This is the FM antenna. It couples, see it's wrapped around the uh, power cord and it couples to the power cord and then this runs to the, uh, to the radio. It's probably the number one right here, which is it's right next to it. Uh, you could definitely get a voltmeter out and, and check it. I'm not, not totally sure which one it is. But one of these goes to the radio for the antenna and it couples it to the power cord. So you have a nice long antenna de like device in the power cord. So you get a better FM reception without having an antenna hanging out the back. Pretty cool little hack actually. And I'll bet it worked really nicely. Not anymore. All right, well, let's see. So what can we do with this? So we've got this nice hulk of a radio here and these are eight ohm speakers which is really nice they're not some you know crazy two ohm or 32 ohm um, very easy to make a uh, um, an amplifier for so if i want to use both of these i'll have to make a stereo amplifier which is really not that big of a deal uh, there's plans all over the place to build an lm386 stereo amplifier so here we are Here's, a, here's our radio chassis. And you know, is, yeah, some people say, well, Ryan, you shouldn't be using a, a plastic chassis for a radio. Well, you need a chassis, don't you? And if you don't have a, uh, a metal one, this will work just fine, better than not having a chassis. And there's days of room in here. I'm not sure if you could fit a bit X40 into this. Come on. 
Uh, I don't think you could hack a bit x40 into this, but I bet you could hack things like my DC40 home built uh, direct conversion receiver. That looks like it'll fit. And that's why I bought it. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for all the hackery, cuttery, and tomfoolery that's going to happen putting this into this with the sounds coming out of this. And I might even get to use this. Stay tuned to Miss.Geek. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to the blog, top right corner, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. In fact, uh, you, you probably can't see the screen, but it's right there. Subscribe. It's at the top on the right. And uh, yeah, I'll be documenting it the whole way. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Have a great day.